Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Find Me in a Book podcast, where we talk about all romance genres and tropes and just what makes it exciting. And I react to them. He sure does. And they are a lot for him. He uh-huh. doesn't usually read. No, I don't. And he definitely doesn't read romance. Nope, I don't. So <laughs> I don't. <laughs> he doesn't. I read monster and sci-fi books, though. He does. Not very often. <laughs> we have a couple here on I our I wait shelves. for the movie. Yeah, he he's very much into movies. I read so. subtitles. That's very good. He does read, so we have that going for him. Um, but we're really excited to have the husband here and have him on here more consistently now. And well, happy to be here, wife. <laughs> Thank you. Should we call you something else? No, you can call me the husband. Should we just call you H? Should H? we call you JR? No. Should we call you... What do you want to be called? You can call me the husband. Uh, that's kind of long, though. The hub? No. <laughs> Let's figure this out later. Okay. Maybe we'll stumble onto it. <laughs> That's fine. I hope everyone had a great week. Uh, we had a lot of books being released this next this past week. There was like five of them, and I think I read three. And I still have a couple more to read and do episodes on. I'm really excited. But yeah, it was a really big week. Tomorrow, no, just kidding. On the 11th, Jennifer Armentrout came out with her new book. So I'm excited to pick that one up. And yeah, there's just been a lot of books that I just have been kind of like cozying down and just like really reading. It's just been the best week. So the best, the best. This was one of them that I wanted to make sure to read first so that we can talk about. And it is The Long Game by Alina Armas, which she this is her third book that she's come out with. And she's very big on like book talk, TikTok, everything like that. And so she, I think, has done a really good job with like her PR team. I don't even know if she has a PR team or if it's just strictly her, but she's done very good in like hyping this book up. And I was like along with the hype because like I did like the second book, uh, which was the American Roommate Experiment. I remember if you've listened to the Spanish Love Deception, I didn't really like the first half of the book, but I did like the second half. And then I went into the American Roommate Experiment. I loved that book. And so I had really high hopes for The Long Game, which is the third book that just came out. And did it live up to the hype? I'm going to be honest and say no. Um, It kind of went back to like how the Spanish Love Deception, like the first half, I just did not like the main like female character. The second half, she was okay. So I don't think this was the best book that she's wrote, honestly. I know that's like, I don't know if that's controversy. Why didn't you I don't like know. this character? Because like she was kind of like cold and callous and very much like not a warm, inviting person. Like, I didn't relate to her. I didn't, like, I don't know. There just wasn't a lot of redeeming qualities about her. I probably would not relate to her either. You would not. That is very true. So we're going to get into that. Um, But, yeah, this is her third book. And I don't know if, like, I just have my expectations way too high. I don't know. Like, that's what we're going to talk about. Um, So with the Mother Sister Standard, I would recommend this book to them. I don't know if they would ever like put it on their list to read, but I recommend if someone likes the previous two books and they really like Alina Armas, they really like kind of like a slow burn. um, It's like a a sports romance. It's kind of close proximity, kind of a, a little bit of enemies to lovers. It's a dual point of view. So you see both the male and female point of view, which I'm starting to like even more. I know it was like at the very beginning of like the whole podcasting when I was like, I hate dual point of view. I hate like, I don't care about the male's point of view. Like I just, yeah, I I don't care about the male's point of view either. Yeah. I was like, I just want want the female because that's what I relate to. And so I was like, it makes more sense this way. But the more that I'm reading them, the more I'm starting to like them and appreciate that other point of view. So I'm growing. I'm growing. It's great. <laughs> I am not growing anymore. Oh. I stopped growing when I was about 16. I start, stopped growing when I hit sixth grade, which was what, 12? I don't know. I was the tallest girl in elementary school. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to sidetrack us. Well, I was, you I, did. I shouldn't have gone for the joke. I'm. That's my bad, everyone. Well, everyone, I think I've actually talked about this in a couple of episodes where I or, stopped growing in sixth grade. Actually, I think it was last episode. I really did say that. Like, I stopped growing in sixth grade. I was the tallest girl. Oh, because I talked about square dancing. Did you have to square dance? Um, yeah. Like in elementary but school? No. 
You didn't? Wait, why did you just say yeah? Well, I've square danced, not in elementary school. They didn't force you to learn? No. <laughs> why? What? I really, Caitlin had to learn. She lived in Louisiana. I, I had to learn in I, elementary school. So Arizona, you didn't have to learn how to square dance. No. <laughs> Why? What school curriculum are you know what? Let's talk about I don't about know. The book. It was fifth grade. It Let's was talk about grade. the book, The Longest <laughs> Game. This is what they want to hear. We've talked about like the beginning of this book, what it's about and everything. So I want to jump into it. And I'm not really going to say like a lot. There's not going to be a lot of spoilers. Um, so it's not going to be like if you listen to the podcast, it's not going to be like, oh, my gosh, I wish I wouldn't have heard that. Like I wanted to go read the book. This is just going to be like a basic summary. We're going to talk about the characters. We're going to talk about kind of like the timeline that happens in this book. So, yeah, there's not going to be anything that you're going to be mad about <laughs> unless we have like opposing like views on things. And maybe you might get mad about something. I don't know. But let's get into the characters. So we have the main female character. Her name is Adeline Reyes. And she is basically like the head of PR for a professional soccer team um, in Florida. And her dad actually owns the team. So he's involved in pretty much a lot of stuff there. And there's this guy named David who is kind of like a VP under her dad. And she dated him for about a year. And we'll learn more about him because it kind of like spurs a lot of things in her that like why she made it made her angry and everything like that. I think one of the reasons why I didn't really like Adeline is that she's kind of portrayed as very cold. I don't know, like almost like a pretentious. So she would always like turn the AC down to like 65 degrees where turtlenecks and like really tight clothing that just like makes her look. If that's what you think pretentious is, then yes. Well, you said she was cold, so I just assumed. <laughs> no. Uh, she was wearing a sweater. Yeah, you're so funny. <laughs> uh, she, yeah, just, she's very business professional, like just very business. And when it opens, the when the book opens, she's basically being reprimanded because she went and punched the mascot and someone filmed it and now it's gone viral. So like Why'd six she million. Why the mascot? That's what we're going to find out is why she got so angry. Um, because that, so that's how the book opens? Yeah. Punch the mascot and now everyone. Well, knows. they say like she decapitates him, <laughs> but not really not like his actual head. So what it kind was of mascot was it? Um, its name is Sparkles. I think it was like a squirrel or something. I don't really. She decapitated Sparkles the squirrel. Exactly. That's what they're they're saying. Get out of here, lady! You decapitated Sparkles. They said the beloved six, mascot. Six million people have seen you bulldoze into the mascot, scratch at his face, and pluck his goddamn head off. That's what they say. That's what her dad says to her, and he also says like, "We're lucky David persuaded Paul not to press charges or sue us." I don't know why you don't like this lady. I'm a huge fan of her from well, that one line. I think so too. Like I like that, but we don't find out until like literally almost the end why she's so mad. And I was so what? annoyed at that. Really? Yes, I was so annoyed at that. How long? Because how many pages is this book? like 300 and something oh my god but she like keeps it in and holds it and so like if she would have told her dad at that moment why she was mad i think it everything would have been okay because he basically is like good thing they didn't press charges or sue us like you're going to be leaving tomorrow on an assignment like we have a philanthropic initiative that will basically require presence and like find like a newfound passion of yours like he basically ships her off because she did this and it's gone viral if anything like they should have like embraced that video and played off of it for the team like but they took it so negative that it's like okay so your team isn't doing very well in the soccer world in general why not take that six million views and make fun of it like play with it make like just really yeah. exciting videos from that like it brings more people into the team like more fans of the team i think that would have been good but this is a romance book i know they don't and do things like that. <laughs> i know and it, the book immediately would have been over if that would have been happened oh. if that would have happened so yeah he her dad ships her off to green oak north carolina straight to jail straight to jail which is basically north carolina <laughs> Oh my! I oh, don't to know North how. Carolina, really? Yes, North oh. Carolina is a terrible place. I'm sorry if you live there. I don't like it. Wow, I'm gonna get so many hate reviews now. <laughs> oh, let them, dear North Carolina Some... people, put your hate in the comments below. Somehow, somehow, all these books have 
a tie to North Carolina. Not just like her books, but a lot of books that I pick up. I'm like, why is it in North Carolina? Why? Like out of all the states, like we've lived there. And maybe if we would have lived in the city, we would have liked it more. But where we were at, it's it's not it. Like it was not it. Just bleh. Yeah. So yeah, it's not even like cute ma and pa town life. Like, it's not. If it was like that, like it would have been more charming. This it was like trash. everything was a franchise trash. Exactly. Everywhere. Yeah. Just I know. Ugh. This is these are a lot of feelings, guys. <laughs> we <laughs> we have a lot of feelings about North Carolina. But yeah, he ships her off because she screws up the PR for the team because she ripped the head off a GD squirrel. Exactly. And her dad was like, "Okay, bye." And so. She leaves the next day and she's kind of like in shock because she's like, how do I fix this? This is all my fault. She's really like down on herself, which makes sure sense. it makes sense, like with her personality. And she I think she feels like she has to be perfect for her dad and perfect for everyone. And so that kind of gives her like this complex, like how dare she make any mistakes and anything wrong? It's her fault. And, of course, she's really stubborn, and so she gets to the middle of the woods where she has airbnb this cabin, and I didn't write down, like, the exact events, but I don't know if she, like, went up to the cabin trying to get into it, and then, like, Cameron comes out, which Cameron is the main male character. If he comes out, or, but she, I think, actually, she's in the car, and I think she, like, sees him or sees something, and instead of pushing the brakes like she means to, she pushes the accelerator and she rams into a tree. And she like basically. She's doing no favors for women drivers. No. <laughs> and like so she hurls this rental against a tree. I think either she passes out or she like she hits her head and he like gets her out of the car and like tries to help her. But she's being so stubborn and come to find out the the cabin that she Airbnb was like right next door to him. And it's like a shack. It's like really run down and just like garbage, basically. And that's when. OK, so this is the moment where I was like, I do not like this main female character is when she hit the accelerator instead of the brakes and hit the tree. Does that bother you at all when um, women are portrayed as bad drivers? Was that why you didn't like her? No, it was just stupid. <laughs> it was just, it was just dumb. stupid that she hit the tree. Like, I don't like when female characters are portrayed as dumb or stupid or just like frustrating or like just how she was portrayed and wrote in this book. I was like, I hate you. <laughs> like, that's really strong words. But like, there were a lot of moments and I should have picked them out. But there was a lot of moments where I was like, I cannot stand her. You think that's like, what the author meant to do? I don't know. That's the thing that I don't know if the author is like this, you know what I'm saying? Or like, m yeah, meant to do it on purpose or like if this is like a normal personality that she is around a lot or like, I don't, I don't know, but I just, I didn't click with the, the female character. Like I didn't click with her. I didn't really like her. I just, she was annoying to me. <laughs> so Cameron and, watches her hit the tree. Yes. Is and, he like a good old Southern boy? No, he's actually from Europe. <laughs> and he... <laughs> and he's in North Carolina. Yes. So this place. Okay. This is Cameron Caldani. He is a two-time winner of the IFFHS, which is the world's best goalkeeper. What it's is like, his connection? To I don't know. So he's he, the property manager for an Airbnb? No. Can you just wait? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm I will sorry. tell you. I, was, I thought like, okay. I have it written down. Uh, so he's like the world's best goalkeeper, basically. He was right. former pr Premier League starter. And he, uh, the last five years, he was in L.A. He played for a team in L.A. And then something happened, which we learned that someone actually broke into his house and really like scared him. And so he immediately went into retirement. Oh. And I don't know how he got to know, like, the mayor of this town, um, but he moved to North Carolina. He'd been there for about a little over a month, and he was coaching a small town, like, kitty league, basically. I think that the, there was, like, 8 to 12-year-olds, but he's the Green Warriors coach. And so he's been there, yeah, about a month coaching a little league team. Um, I don't know why there. I don't know how that happened um maybe it says in there and I just didn't pay attention uh but yeah so he's been doing that so Adeline shows up 
And she is very stubborn, so she tries to stay in that shack, which is really run down. And she basically has to sleep on the floor because the mattress is, like, infested. Like, it's just a bad situation. But she's stubborn, so she is stays there. Is she, like, there. broke? Is that why she doesn't no, want it? she just wants to show that she can do it. So she does. Man, there's cockroaches on the couch. You shouldn't sleep with them. No, I can do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm I'm strong. Exactly. I can handle sleeping in a rat infested couch. <laughs> I yeah, no, not me. I would be gone in an instant. That's what Adeline sounds like in my head. Yeah. I'm just yeah, me too. <laughs> so she shows up at their next practice and basically takes over everything. She's like, I'm the general manager. I don't like you. You're fired. Like to Cameron. She just like bulldozes in. And that was another moment where I was like, I don't like her. You know, why is she doing this? PR teaches you a lot about general managing a soccer team. I bet. I guess so. like, it's, I think so that's she what felt she could do it. Well, I think that's what she felt like her dad wanted her to do. And so she, yeah, she goes in, she's like, I'm the general manager fires Cameron And she's like, this is my first decision as general manager of the Green Warrior. So she just basically pushes her way in. And then she realizes her mistake a couple days in and was like, okay, well, if you don't coach the girls, I'm going to tell the whole town who you are. Like, isn't that so – I did not like that. Like, the small town is super nice. Like, there's this mayor. Her name is Josephine, and they call her Josie. And she's just kind of, like, involved in everything. Like, she runs a coffee shop. She does, like, all these classes. Like, she's just very, very involved in the town. And so her – so Adeline and Cameron are very – like, they just butt heads, of course. Like, he's really mean to her. She's really mean back. And he's like, okay, well, if I'm going to coach these girls now, like, I signed you up for every single activity on the agenda for – the weekend and till the end of fall because they have all these classes so basically he's making her really be involved with the town and go to all these things and so when she talks to josephine so she makes cameron coach the girls which i guess it was like a girls high school league or something no it's like eight to twelve they're like little girls oh yeah so well (laughs) she like fired him and then a couple days later she makes him teach little girls and basically blackmails him Cause he's like, cause she says like, if you don't teach him, like I'm going to tell the whole town who you are. Oh, so the town doesn't know that he's like the world's best goalkeeper. No. And he doesn't want them to know cause he doesn't want any publicity or people to know that he's there. Publicity. Publicity. And so, yeah. So there's (laughs) that whole thing. And then he fires back by making her go to a bunch of like community classes. Yeah. So there's like yoga with goats. There's like a pottery (laughs) class. Goat yoga. There's like, yeah, there's like (laughs) a a lot of different things. And so she's like with Josephine around, she's like, okay, well he wants to sign up too and do it right along with me. So that makes them spend more time together. That makes them like start to like each other. He actually falls first, which is interesting because I think he deserves better, but (laughs) That's, Cameron, that's a whole nother thing. you deserve thing. so much better than Adeline. Yeah, it just, it's fine. And then the last half, like, you kind of under, start to understand why she is the way she is and, like, how she grew up. And we do find out, it finally comes out why she punched the mascot is because she overheard David talking to the mascot saying, like... And who's David again? Sorry. He's, like, the VP, like, under her dad. Okay. Like, and basically dated her to get to her dad basically oh that's what we find out so he this david guy tells the mascot guy like she's so frigid like so boring i really dodged a bullet there like too bad because when the old man kicks the bucket she'll probably inherit most of his money but no i can only endure so much and so she also finds out that he never david that he never wanted to date her really he only wanted to date the daughter of andrew underwood and her dad had encouraged it because they had made sense and this is a really shitty part too the dad had promised david a high management position in the club if he married her isn't that like that gives you a complex like you kind of understand why she is arranged marriage business but not to her benefit yeah no, it's he's basically like using her as like an object. Yeah, and he, he it probably shows that he doesn't think very highly of his daughter. Yeah, either. it's like, look, she Adeline's 
Adeline's not good. Well, you got to take her off my hands. Well, he basically shipped her off when she did something wrong, like in the whole public. So yeah, it's like this is kind of a shitty dad. Like yeah, no, it's de- it, no. It, there's there's bad all around here. Yeah, I just think the family might be bad in general. This doesn't sound like a very aspirational family. It's not. It really. And so that's when I start to understand. Like okay. That pro- that makes sense why she probably is the way that she is. Okay, like, so you kind and of... And so then I gave her grace, and I was like, okay, that makes more sense. And I started to like her more because I understood her. But I think that this should have been at the beginning. Right. So then that you're on her side the whole time because I was so against her up until that point that I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. And I liked her more. Yeah. And so then I rooted for her and I rooted for Cameron, but it wasn't until that point that I was like, it's not, I don't like her. <laughs> so, you know, there's a common thing in storytelling called saving the cat. And it's just a term used to like make people like the protagonist of the story. Mm-hmm. They do something like saving a cute animal that makes you like them. So this is her saving the cat moment. Like, she stood up for herself. That makes you why? Why would you put that at the end of the book? That's just weird. I know. That's weird. It was. That really bothers. Like, I'm really hyper fixating on this right <laughs> now. And I know I'm not a published author. I, know. I but I, I, I'd like to think I know a thing or two about storytelling at this point in my life, and that is just yeah weird. That's why it was like I didn't really like the book. Okay. Like because it it just didn't make sense. Like I would have liked her if I knew this at the beginning. Um, but yeah, so she overheard David say those things to the mascot, and it sounds like she should have just like punched David, because yeah, David yeah, why was did telling. The mascot get punched? I don't know. I wonder if like Paul, who is Sparkles, like the, <laughs> the thing. Paul who plays Sparkles, exactly. So David was telling him he was like blabbing all the secrets to like this mascot. But yeah, then she went after the mascot. So I don't know why. Maybe he like made a comment to her. Like, maybe, I don't remember that part. I don't know if he did or if it was wrote or anything like that. But, yeah, she, like, goes after them. And so Cameron finally understands why she is the way she is. And he he's like, you know what? You've just been justifying everyone's everyone else's behavior, and you're extremely hard on yourself. And so he starts to understand more because he's, like, starting to like her. And she, like, is just so closed off. So when she starts to, like, open up to him, he's like, oh, yeah, I like you. Like you have some redeeming qualities, and like kind of. And not, also in the background, really. yeah. Also in the background, their little team is starting to improve. Like, there's a couple little like of the the little girls. Like you start to see their personalities, and they're so funny and so cute that like they're just really likable. And towards the end of the the book, like kind of actually right at the end, she learns that her dad is selling the club, and she thinks that it's her fault. And so she, like, flies back, and uh, she, like, talks to her dad, and he says that uh, David basically blackmailed her dad and said, like, her dad doesn't have any other choice because, like, she messed it up. And so she's, like, blaming herself, and, like, David is, like, blackmailing him and using him as collateral. And, like, that's what he did. Like, he said that David threatened to go to some gossip sites with the story of our arrangement, if I took the VP position from him, the sponsors too. It's water on the bridge. Honestly, I thought you had a little more self-respect than letting this bother you. He says that to her because he thinks that she is back because of this like little twist at the end that I'm not going to reveal. Um, but yeah, there's like this little twist and that's why her dad thinks that she's back. But really she's like, no, I'm back because you're selling the team and I thought it was my fault. And so there's like this little twist at the end that it's like i don't like that (laughs) like because you you find out okay so this is a spoiler so if you don't want to know the end of the book skip this next part so josephine the mayor Uh is adeline's (laughs) half-sister of course let's just throw in this extra why why is she the half-sister i don't know so her dad does that serve so that's why her dad sent her there to I guess, spend time with her half-sister. So that's why he was back, because he thinks that she found out that Josephine was her half-sister. So that I think David found that out too or something, and so used that against her. 
And yeah, it just like didn't make sense. None of it made sense. And so then Adeline, she sticks up for herself. She says that she resigns. Uh, she goes back to Cameron. They basically create this club for like little girls soccer and it's like getting big and they like fall in love and they're together it was just weird i don't like, like this i don't i don't this either. is weird it was weird i'm sorry if you guys liked this book i really am but it just it didn't make sense and i was really disappointed by it like there was a lot of parts that i really did like but it just it like didn't like cameron yeah, I did like Cameron. Cameron was a softy. He had like two cats. He had a goat. He had a chicken. Like maybe he Cameron was should just... get a spinoff. Well, he's supposed to be with Adeline. <laughs> well, yeah, but like maybe he just gets his own spinoff because Cameron. They could start a brand new story. Cameron splinters off from Adeline because he he comes to the realization that her family is just kind of trash and he doesn't want to be involved with that anymore. Well, he doesn't so. have to be involved with them if he's with her. Like, well, no, she is the she is part yeah, of the family. I don't know, but yeah, Cameron was a very very likable character. I did really like him. He was very kind. Like he, I did like how he fell in love first, and I did like their little romance. And I liked how it was. There was a lot of tension in it. I did like that part, but just like the surrounding situations, I just didn't like. It was it was hard for me. So yeah, happily ever after. I mean, towards the end, Adeline did really open up and become, like, who she is and, like, really figure out, like, what she wanted to do. And I love that for her. Very character building towards the end. And I love that. She started to have more redeeming qualities. I, I love that comeback for her. Anyways, so that was The Long Game by Alina Armas. Well, that and was certainly no Spanish love deception. It definitely wasn't. If I could rate the books, I would say American Roommate Experiment as number one. Exper yes, Experiment as number one. Spanish love deception and then the long game. A fair assessment, I will have yeah. to assume, because these are books that don't sound that interesting to me. Yeah. But if you like romance books, I'm sure... Yeah, uh, check I mean out it's the a roommate it's a quick read. The American Roommate Experiment. Yeah, I yeah I really liked that book. I really liked both characters in that book, um, and even like the characters from the Spanish Love Deception, they are kind of featured in the American Roommate Experiment. You know what this so. book reminds me of? The long game that you described. It reminds me of Ted Lasso a little bit. If yeah. Ted Lasso was if if the story centered around. Um, Ted Lasso is like assistant coach, but his assistant coach was a very unlikable person that just like got banished away from Ted Lasso. I could see that because he's a very he's a very quirky person. Yeah, but if so, if you just made him like stubborn and we, I don't know. I don't know. It's a good thought. It's about yeah. <laughs> you're wrong. That so, that went nowhere. That's fine. And you're welcome. <laughs> I'm sorry so, to make you forget something of vital information after hearing that. <laughs> Yeah, so that is the Spanish love game. Nope, just kidding. That is <laughs> the love. The Spanish the, love game? The Spanish love game. I would game. read that book, the Spanish love game. Uh, the long game. So anyways, if you like this book, all to you. People like different books. I totally understand that. Um, but it was just not for me. So Nor me. Nor the husband. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. We have uh, my YouTube channel, which is Find Me in a Book Podcast. We have all the social medias that you Instagram, could ever want. TikTok. Threads, we're on there. Um, but definitely stay tuned for next episode. It will be really fun. And rate and review wherever you listen to your podcast. And we will talk to you later. Mm -hmm.